Bum. Bum. Bum bum. Hello. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with OBS. I don't know what's going on with OBS. OBS being weird. Well, there goes this this vod. I might not be able to upload this vod because it's all all fucked up. Oh well. OBS poopa stinka moments for real. I don't know why that happened. It happened last time with bug fables too, and I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe, maybe I need to update it? Question mark. I don't know. <sighs> oh well. <clears throat> Let's hope it doesn't happen again. It could also be Twitch, maybe. If I'd like. Because Rima stream ate ass on Friday. Oh. I don't want. I don't want to put you through that hassle because it could. It it can be annoying to render. I don't want to put the I don't want to put that hassle on you. I'll figure something out. Don't worry. Don't, don't you worry. <clears throat> anyway, back to the game before OBS does a poopa. However, if you examine the diagram carefully, you'll see that there is one other possible location from which the birdcage could have fallen. The same distance of 30 feet. No! No! <laughs> Benzik's like, no, no, no! <laughs> well, it appears the defense has a possible explanation to put forward. Go ahead, counsel. Now I present the picture. Yes, my lord, of course! My ass! Being, being very risque today, aren't we, Oz? You will indicate the place to which you are referring to this same diagram. The alternative location from which the birdcage could possibly have fallen to requisite 30 feet. Right here. Take that! Yes, because you said ass. The place I'm referring to is here! But that's... Where the birdcage would have been to begin with! Which is exactly the point, my lord. Yes, the birdcage was in the machine on the stage. But what we must also consider is the height of the stage itself. Go on, counsel. It turns out that the experimentation stage was built at a considerable high a uh, considerable height above ground level. If you look at the diagram, in fact, you'll see it's about the same height above the ground as the balloon was above the crash site. <laughs> when the experiment went got underway, the machine and the birdcage were engulfed in steam. <sighs> At that moment, the floor of the stage gave way, and if we assume there to be a void underneath, this birdcage, and the one seen in the, by the audience, would have fallen almost exactly the same distance. <laughs> Once again, my lord. Ow. This all points to the fact that there was not one birdcage, but two! Objection. My learned friend has no evidence that the birdcage had such a contrivance in its design. Uh, yeah we do. Someone is responsible for the criminal destruction of the kinesis machine itself, it's true. However, the stage still stands. And take a moment to look at the photographic print at the scene following yesterday's explosion. Lol? Good lord, the metal grill has for that formed the floor of the machine is undone! Yes, most likely blown open by the force of the explosion that destroyed the rest of the machine. The defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately. Ha ha ha. He he he. Mr. Drebber. <laughs> it was you who built the kinesis machine. Which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. 
Uh. Gah. Professor, whether Professor Hairbrain's hypothesis is sound or not makes no difference. Because it's the construction of this machine that matters. A machine designed to take Mr. Asman's life. And lay the blame firmly on the professor's door. Something that could only have been carried out... By you, Mr. Enoch Drebber! Whoa! Grrrr! Oh. <laughs> Alright, that animation's still pretty cool. If my learned friend has reached the end of his wild assertions. What the fuck, dude? That's expensive! The prosecution would like to crush the defense's argument slowly but surely. What? Your argument fails to hold water. On two counts. Wow, I wonder how he's so good with a sword. Pours wine only to crush it. <laughs> Two? Firstly, before and after the experiments, this witness went nowhere near the kinesis machine. Every relevant member of the staff from the exhibition was attest has attested to that. And I believe members of Scotland Yard all have also been on watch duty at every public experiment. Oh. In other words, Mr. Drebber had no opportunity to switch the alleged pair of bird cages. Attention. But I've already explained why he wouldn't have needed to! The nonsense with the crossbow. That doesn't bolster your case at all. The man who disappeared from the, ca from the stage and the man who crashed into the tower are one and the same. The forensic investigation team's report is unequivocal on that point. Ah! And the second flaw in your session is a distinct lack of motive. Why would this man have wanted to take the victim's life? He had no reason to do so. Uh, a uh, motive? Do I have to think of everything myself? I have here a contract provided by the witness. What contract is this, Lord Van Zeeks? The contract into which Mr. Drebber entered with the victim, Mr. Asman. It reads, Mr. Drebber is to receive 30% of the re remun remunerations? remunerations from government grants or other income. 30%? Certainly they're favorable contractual conditions. There were... But there was one very important provision bolted onto that clause. What provision? Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. That's oddly specific. That is weirdly specific. In other words, if either of us were to die, the contract would become null and void. So you see, I had nothing to gain from Mr. Asman's death. The diametric opposite, in fact. It's kind of dumb. Yeah. Very specific. Very sus. Ugh. Need I say more? The witness had neither an opportunity nor a reason to commit the alleged crime. In short, the possibility of Mr. Drebber having done as you suggest is Nile. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Look at him go. Hmm. It seems the defense's assertion was somewhat wide of the mark. Lord Van Zeeks, you will submit the contract as evidence, please. Yeah, I want to read that contract. I'm a lawyer. I read contracts. That's what we do. Hey, he's doing the, the, the phoenix pose. The phoenix despair pose. Anyway, let's look at that contract. Let's see. Terms of investment. The inspector, Mr. The oh, inspector. The investor, Mr. Odie Asman, hereby enters into contract with the provider, Mr. Enoch Drever, to fund labor and materials for the construction of a super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Mr. Drebber is to receive 30% of all 
remunerations from government grants or other income. Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. And it was both, and it was signed by by Asmin and Drebber. They're, they're, that was the signatures. Well, we failed. <laughs> it's true. If Drebber had no opportunity to switch the birdcage under the stage with the one in the crystal tower, he couldn't have done it. And in any case, I have no idea what his motive might have been. There is one aspect of your argument. That still holds true, however. There were two bird cages. The prosecution is, un is unable to deny that. Uh. So I'm sure you're, the you're on the right lines, Mr. Norohodo. And I've no doubt there are other aspects of your assertion that are undeniable truths, too. Well, it would seem that the defense has no rejoinder to offer. Cut, cut, cut. Well, I must say, I'm a little surprised. I came here to testify about the machine I built, and instead, my reputation is defiled. But the prosecution's counter has set the record straight, I think. It's impossible that I'm the culprit. Objection. No, you. Yeah. Fuck you. At the beginning of this trial, we believed that there was only one birdcage. Yet now we know there must have been two. In other words, there was more there was more to the demonstration than we realized at first. I think it's abundantly clear that the same applies to the culprit. Get to the point. The stage demonstration was constructed and set up in its entirety by you, Mr. Drebber. Therefore, it's inconceivable that you had no hand in the events that transpired. So if circumstances mean it's impossible that you could have carried out the crime yourself, it points to the fact that someone else was involved. Oh, an accomplice? Someone else? Counsel, are you suggesting? Yes, my lord. Mr. Drebber had an accomplice. Objection. But who? An accomplice now? Well then, I presume you're prepared for what's to come. Now that you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. If these accusations turn out to be false, then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. It's okay, man. We've done worse. We leave government secrets in a public trial. <laughs> we can deal with this. Well, counsel, do you intend to pursue this course and formally accuse another party of involvement in this matter? What do I do here? At the moment, this is little more than a, than a hunch on my part. I don't know for sure if Mr. Drebber had an accomplice, or even if he really is the culprit here. One way or another, though, I have to make my position clear as a lawyer. So that's what my so what's my stance going to be? Does Mr. Drebber have an accomplice or not? Uh, I have a slight idea, but there's like. Literally no evidence to support it other than one thing. And it's like, and it's speculation at best. Uh... Hmm... Stairs. <laughs> it was a little German boy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The defense is ready to name Mr. Drebber's accomplice. So 
Somehow the two bird cages must have been switch switched. Everything points to that. Yet, according to the coroner's report, that's not a possibility. But that inconsistency itself is a clue. Aha! So it, it, it is who I thought it was. Counsel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My lord? You have received a stock warning already. If you are nevertheless determined, then I must now ask you to identify this alleged accomplice by name. So, your answer please. The little German boy switched to cages all by himself. We are really, really playing with fire here. It's the goth lady! The name of the person in question is... What's wrong, my Nipponese friend? Surely fear doesn't bind your tongue now. It's far too late nap for that. Of course I'm afraid. After all, naming her in this capacity is definitely going to make waves. A lot of waves. I could very well turn every single person in this court courtroom against me. I'm sure it will be alright, Mr. Naruhodo. You got me, and that's all that matters. Thank you, Mrs. Sato. The enemy always appears larger than life, but you'll appear exactly the same to the enemy. Alright then. Here goes. You've kept us waiting long enough. Your answer, Council. Now. The person who colluded with Mr. Drebber in order to carry out this wicked crime is Scotland Yard's coroner. Dr. Courtney Scythe! What? What the blazes are you talking about? Dr. Scythe! The head of the forensic investigation team? And the coroner who conducted the autopsy on the victim? Point. We know there were two bird cages. So who could have carried out the switch to complete the illusion? The accident happened in front of a huge crowd of spectators and the area was immediately sealed off. Then everyone, police officers included, were banished to make way for the forensic investigation team. When else could switch the When else could the switch have occurred? It can only have been in this team's presence. That makes sense. It's essential that the court determines exactly what happened following the incident. The defense demands that Dr. Scythe be summoned to the witness stand at once to testify. I forgot they were here, actually. <laughs> you got no you got nerve, lad! Standing up there, dragging the yard's name through the mud. I I didn't mean to. I know the woman very well. There, be there no better dead room worker out there. How dare you call her a criminal? I know, I just forgot they were there. <laughs> My learned friend's imagination appears to be wilder than the East End at night. But the recklessness of your accusation aside, there's another grave problem with your argument. One which the prosecution demands you address at once. A grave problem? Oh my word. Who do you think Claim acted as the victim's doppelganger? W what? Hmm. Certainly, if the birdcage containing the body of the victim was exchanged for another. That cage must have also contained a body. Not necessarily. Not really. Why would it have to have a body? Why would it have to have a body? And yet... No missing persons or accidental deaths... Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> that, sorry. That caught me by surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry. No missing persons or accidental deaths of anyone, even remotely resembling the victim, have been reported. I mm, I find that I find I call bullshit on that, but okay, sure. Which means there was no one dead or alive who could have fulfilled the role of a body double for Mr. Asman. Ugh, that's true. 
If my argument is that there were two bird cages, then there must have been one person inside each. Uh, uh, I don't exactly buy that, but I kind of have to for the sake of the game. But I don't know if I've got an answer for, to this yet. Have I? What can I do to reveal how this body double stunt was achieved? Uh. Well, the defense will address my learned my learned friend's concerns by presenting evidence that reveals the true nature of Mr. Asman's body double. Good gracious, evidence! I do hope this isn't filibustering, counsel. The court is expecting a name. If you think you have relevant evidence, present it now. The body double and the birdcage were hiding inside the balloon that was floating above the stage. Which means that any witness would have only have seen them from 60 feet away. So who was it that appeared out of the explosion some 18 meters above the spectators? Aha! The body double inside the second bird cage was... Take that! The professor. We know that the victim, Mr. Asman, was in the bird cage that was situated inside the kinesis machine on stage. And therefore, he couldn't have been inside the second birdcage. Instead, that contained something else. What's been described as a body double, which is what fell from the sky and crashed into the crystal tower. Yes, counsel, according to your somewhat elaborate version of events. And that body double inside the bird second birdcage was in fact Come on, say it. It's all right, Mr. Naruto. You're ready for this. Just steal yourself and come out with it. Thank you, Mr. Sato. I needed that. Emotional support to Sato. As I was saying, the body devil inside the second birdcage was... was unbelievably, as it may seem, that thing there. <laughs> That thing! <laughs> He's not even looking at it! When did this get brought into the court, though? Ugh, he's speechless. Open your eyes and look into mine, my Nipponese friend. No. <laughs> now tell me. What are you playing at? Stand firm now, Hirosuke. This is the time to show your Japanese spirit. As the court will observe, this is a waxwork model. Oh, slap! A model, in fact, of an infamous London murderer from ten years ago. The Professor. His one frame eye-opening. Objection! Imagine if that was his old body. <laughs> the baby slap. You started by indicating the leader of the forensic investigation team as an accomplice in this crime. And now you've moved on to indicating waxwax? Yes! That's about the size of it! But why? And why this waxwork? It looks nothing like the victim. In fact, it could hardly resemble him at less. What possible justification can you give? Okay, there we go. If you want to know why, ask Mr. Drebber. <laughs> what? Just days before Professor Hairbrain performed his public demonstration, Mr. Drebber abducted this model from Madame to Spells. Did, did you say abducted? And two days after the incident of the Great Exhibition, he returned it to the museum. Then... The timing... Is this true, Mr. Drebber? Uh... Um... 
At first, I couldn't see why Mr. Drepper would have stolen the waxwork and then given it back again. But now the reason is clear. He took it so that he could put it inside the second birdcage as a body double for Mr. Asman. Gah! Objection! Are you hearing this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Are you hearing the defense's astonishing proposal? That the witness fabricated this vast machine with the intention of deceiving some wretched scientist? That he did so in collusion with the country's finest coroner on a public stage in front of a vast audience? And that, to effect the deception, he used a waxwork model that in no way resembles the victim. Are we really to believe this far-fetched tale? What do you decide? Objection. <laughs> Wait! Yes, if you put it like that, of course it sounds implausible. My lord! I need to speak, if you please. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Myself and my colleagues have reached an agreement. Oh, here we go. Summation examination time, baby. Very good. In that case... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leanings for the court to hear now. Guilty. Guilty? Guilty. Guilty. Oh, her voice is deep. Guilty. 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 It wouldn't be this game without one. Yup. We need to push this segment every court hearing. This is a video game after all. <laughs> so, as indicated by the foreman, the jury has reached a consensus. I knew that was going to happen. We knew it too, don't worry. We shall get through this, Mr. Naruhodo, as we always do. And uncover some new truths along the way, I'm quite sure. Yes, I agree. I'm going to have to appeal to the jurors as usual, and see if I can persuade them to change their minds. Are we the only lawyers to use it, the summation examination thing? Or like, after we start doing it, have other lawyers across London started doing it too? Because that would be interesting if that were the case. The defense will now embark on a summation examination. The, the judge just knows already. He already knows. We don't even need to say it. Are you... Are you and your fellows ready to proceed, Mr. Foreman? We are, my lord. Very well. In this case, I ask now to state clearly for all present to hear. The grounds on which each of you have decided that the defendant is guilty of the crime of which he is charged. <coughs> Fuck. I've known that woman for years! She'd never be an accomplice to anything! It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Oh dear. This is most troubling. But surely the waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the corner, is it? I've had my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust them much. I've seen no rigorous proof that this waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. It's conjecture. Accusing someone without raw evidence is... He ain't got a proper job, is he? I won't have it! Who let this child in here? Somewhat unsurprisingly, it seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinions. Given that its face is obscured, and its build in no way resembles that of the victim... I can only applaud my learned friend's temerity at suggesting edit it as a Mr. Asman's body double. Guilty! I generally think that this is just a short woman, though. Yeah, probably. But it's just funny to think, like, who let this child in here? I mean, they did bring another child to the witness stand. That's another thing. Yes, the applause is deafening, and yes, I know it seems extraordinary. But that's the point. That's why I have a strong feeling it's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes. What are you thinking, Mr. Narado? I can't explain why at the moment, 
but I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Well, it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes, and I'm convinced it's something far more significant than whether or not the model looked like the victim. Well, if that's the case... We must prevent the trial from ending prematurely at all costs. Yes, I agreed. I have to find a way out of this. If you are ready, Counsel, you may proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Ba -ba -da -ba. And I went for years, she'd never been accomplice to anything. Um, the order of things seems to have changed around here for some reason. I'm a copperhead. It's corporal's discretion to bend the rules sometimes when needs must. Ah, uh, huh. Mm hmm. I see. <coughs> What's wrong with that? A lot of things. For example, put the. Put. Put the fucking gun down! Where do I start? I've been working at the yard for 40 odd years! That's. Even more than I thought. We've only had a metropolitan police service in town for 70 years, you know. Of course, times changed. The public didn't trust the coppers back when I started. It was rough. Uh, I don't trust them now. We had to fight crime, and we had to fight to win the public's trust as well. And when we did. And then you lost it immediately. Rinsing science was in its infancy too. Even more than it is now. And she spearheaded the revolution. Uses hard detective stare. <laughs> Dr. Scythe, you mean? That's right. About ten years ago. Ten years ago it was when I was still a youngish bobby on the beat. That's when she started making a name for herself as a top class corner. And now look at her head of the forensics investigation team. And a woman no less. Oh yeah, that was a big deal back then. Well, you won't hear me complain. It's what we all dreamt of back then, I'll tell you. Oddly... Sli sli oddly progressive, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Could you tell me without holding that gun in the air? We were all out to- we were all out to uphold justice, lad. Full of vim, we were full of vim. That's coming across loud and clear. It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Why is it nonsense? But we're only just starting to understand this case! Heh. <laughs> Nothing to say? What are you reading there, sir? The man behind those murders on Sulepon Street was caught in two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to this case, is it? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies. And it was evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right! Oh! That woman is at the forefront of this country's fight against crime! The idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of old tosh! I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around. Why would you assume that? Well, quite simply because that unsettling swindler has no relationship with the woman, does sh does he? True. As it stands, we don't know any we don't know of any connection. They're all sus. Oh gosh, but it would be delightfully romantic that they were somehow they were somehow to have a mutual interest in the waxwork. She's the only one of the jurors that I like so far. She's very cute, and I like her. R romantic A woman of society such as myself views everything in terms of relationships, you know? Well, you learn something new every day. Even if you don't want to. 
I think the magician guy is funny. He's funny too. One might wonder what about the possi possible relationship between the defendant and this corner woman. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. <laughs> this lady is like, hmm, I wonder if the prosecutor and the defendant are gay. <laughs> This woman may be more astute than I've been giving her credit for. If that's the woman's stance, then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Dr. Psyche would be enough. Hmm, they're gay. Good for them, good for them. She's 200 years too early. She was ahead of her time. Yes, I agree. As soon as we have even a whiff of a connection, she'll be the first to know. I mean, we already have one. So we just have to present her the thing now? Where is it? Uh... Oh, we can't... Okay. Can we not present? Oh, I guess not. Oh, well. What sort of problems? Let's just say we have run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. They verse two people against each other. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audiences. So we perform our great magic in parks, on street corners, and the like. But the police use an ex any excuse. Oh, <laughs> the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. Oh, he's swirling the gun. Excuse me. Put the gun down. Do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Ottermalt? Who are you calling a mass murderer? Eh? Huh? S sorry, my mistake. I, I got confused because I heard you like him. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? Huh? What? Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> wait. Oh, you look like him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I misread. <laughs> oh, look, I need to lock the man. You want to be locked up, Sonny? <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Sholmes. Perhaps we could move on. I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. And clearly you do. Hmm? Back in my day. Back in the good old days. It wasn't like this! Oh, they're playing Gregsy's theme. What was it like, sir? We worked our fingers to the bone to earn the public's trust, we did! And by Jove, we earned it! People respected us back then! Respected you? <laughs> no one would have called a coroner into question in them days! A coroner's report was the hallmark of an investigation done right! Question, who the fuck allowed this man to bring a gun? That's what I want to know! I'm guessing it's because, like, ah, oh, because he's a cop, he's allowed. He literally just said cops are allowed to bend the rules, and it's like, hmm, hmm. I don't know about that. I don't think they're allowed, but cops sure do believe they are. <laughs> Especially when Dr. Courtney Stevens put her name to it. Wait, what? Bullshit. Yeah, greed. Call, uh, rightfully so. Call BS. Also, he just dropped a bombshell just now. She was the best of the best, and the apple of the fo- Oh. Hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it got a bit carried away there. Stevens is Dr. Scythe's maiden name. Ah, so she did change her name. Her maiden name. 
So that was before she was married. Ah! Oh yeah, it's right, she's a mom! I forgot! Of course, yes, yeah, silly me. It's Soth now, isn't it? Stevens. I'm sure I've seen that name somewhere recently. Yes! Anyway, the point is... Those were the great days of police and not luck now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But do you think you could change your statement to include that name? Well, yes, I don't see why not. She was Courtney Stevens back when I knew her, of course. A legendary coroner, even. Uh... Should I press it, or can I... I think we need to press it, just in case. Let's press it, just in case. Hold it! She was legendary, was she? What did you say?! Ah! That woman is still the best coroner in the land! And of the forensic investigation team! Dang, she's really got a fanboy with this guy. Um, legendary was your description, sir. Not mine. Rubbish! That word never passed my lips. I'd never describe anybody that way. Ever! Not if they were still in the game. <coughs> this guy is hurting my voice. <laughs> I think the point you're trying to make is that Dr. Scythe is an extremely talented coroner. Would that be fair? It would. If it weren't for the fact that you're trying to drag the legendary woman's reputation through the mud. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that legendary. Okay, hold on. So yeah, we pit. We pit. I keep pressing the wrong button. Objection. There we go. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To whose statements do you refer, Council? So, juror number two. Oh gosh, me? What can I do for you? I presume that you heard that juror number six said in his statement? It's brought to light the maiden name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe. Which in turn has revealed a connection that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connections and relationships irresistible. But oh golly, I'm afraid I fail to see what you mean. Dr. Scythe's maiden name is Stevens. And through that name, the coroner is very definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. The defense has evidence to prove it. My goodness! Evidence, you say? How, how utterly enthralling! Counsel, the court cannot overlook that last remark. I very much hope there is substance to your claim. Of course, my lord. I would ask the court to look at this. Look at this autopsy report! I have here a certain autopsy report from 10 years ago. A 10-year-old autopsy report? What relevance does that have? It is, of course, from the autopsy, autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork, the killer known as the Professor. Every time I do it makes me sport. <laughs> the Professor's... But the man was a capital offender, so... That's right. This is a certification of death that was drawn up after the convict's execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney Stevens. Oh my! Courtney Stevens?! Struck a lot! It appears that the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Scythe ten years ago. And a few days ago, Mr. Jebber very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Madame to Spells. A waxwork that doesn't in fact resemble the victim, Mr. Asman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unsavory relationship between those events? Absolutely. I'm sure of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Drebber. 
Hidden links, mysterious connections, sacred relationships. This is all most extraordinary. We're surely obliged now to explore this further. I love her. Quite right. We can't let this trial come to an end now. Not while there's th this cloud of suspicion hanging over the yard's best corner. It wasn't like this in my day, but we're still here to, there to uphold justice in the end. Oh wow, that's surprising. At least he's a man of his word, I guess. It's a professor. That's what links the frightful swindler in the corner. The... I see no rigorous proof that the waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. It's conjecture. Hold it! But you claimed the whole instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a trick! There are did, but there's more than one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, isn't there? Sorry? I'll grant you, given that this cage appeared from amidst an explosion, there'd have been no need for, to use a real person. But if a waxwork had been used, the culprit should at least have had the decency to make it look like the victim. I'm not sure exactly how much criminals are governed by decency. The point is, if you're going to make a claim that the waxwork was being inside the birdcage, you need to give us some evidence. Without that, it's just not science. I suppose we should expect nothing less than a logical argument from a fellow of the Royal Society. But that perhaps he means his mind could be changed if we manage to present suitable evidence. Evidence that the professor's waxwork was inside the birdcage. Can I produce that or not? Do we have? Where Does it say where it was found? No, it doesn't. Take this, the mysterious splore inside the birdcage! <laughs> hmm... <laughs> Spin. I don't think we have evidence yet. Well, I can state quite categorically, sir, that we have no such evidence at the present time. That much was abundantly clear before that brassy proclamation, I assure you. And why and why you can count on the fact that I shan't be changing my leaning. Oh, whoops. Oh dear, that proclamation was even brassier than yours, Mr. Norgado. If only we had some evidence, things might be different, though. Hold it! I've got to ask. Why have you brought that corn to court with you? Corn to court? He's been growing back on the farm, picked him off on me way into town. He's a proper nibbler, he is. Look at her go. I don't like the way her eyes go to like different directions while she's eating. I really don't like it. And he's infinite, too! Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe you could wait until after the trial? Oh! I don't like the sound of that! You need co- You need kernels at- You need kernel, kernels? Kernels? Whenever I have some at- Whenever I have some at big to decide, the kernels always point me in the right direction, see? You're talking about your cob of corn? Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals, like people do back home? So Professor Hairbrain's fate is to be decided by a corn of cob? A cob of corn? 
could you not at least could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on the defendant's guilt? Oh, I don't know about that. Me time's awfully full already. Amazing. I know it seems a little far-fetched to think that the waxwork model of the professor was in the, that birdcage. On the other hand, it explains a lot. If there really is a reason why that particular waxwork had to be used as Mr. Asman's double, we must do everything we can to make the jurors understand it. Truth is, I'm sure that's the key. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure that's the key to this. It's the most puzzling part of it, too. In that case, we should see what additional information we can glean whilst trying to change the jurors' minds. Was that a pun? <laughs> if you can read, if you can read a book whilst eating a rice cracker, Miss Naruhondo, I'm sure you can do this. Right? Yes. Uh, the uh, amazing joke. I didn't realize that was a pun. I thought I thought that was just Naruto Ryunosuke like saying it funny. Actually, did we? We did not investigate, huh? We didn't investigate this. Is there anything suspicious? Oh, here we go. This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you could remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone, even a convicted criminal. I know. It's starting to make me livid, actually. Mr. Narodo, please. I mean, just think about it. I'm ima Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden. You'd be utterly helpless. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite so much anger. Oh, right. Sorry. Well, that was silly. Is there nothing else about this thing? Huh. Guess not. Brain's trying to think of a solution, but none of them are non nuclear <laughs> There's a little plaque here. Look. Fostering bur bur burgeoning? Burgeoning talent for the future of scientific discovery. It seems rather ironic, doesn't it? But clearly, Mr. Drebber really was a very talented scientist. Okay. Hmm. You must have get that. Da -da 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 Out of nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Maybe if we had listened to his... ...him without any interruption now. What sort of problems? Let's just say we've had... Uh, we have run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity with the uh, audiences, so we perform our great magic on parks, and street corners, and the like. But the police use an excuse to make our lives difficult. Sometimes, they even cook up a story to extort mo m monies from the poor. That's... relevant. Well, that's definitely not right. Yes, and it is why I say that if you trust the police, you will have trouble. This guy knows what's up. But here you are, claiming this waxworks model was stolen to star in an illusionary spectacular. 
The idea is so wild. I think I will take my chances and believe the authorities on this occasion. This is how the public at large views Scotland Yard, is it? Our own police force in Tokyo is not even 20 years old yet, is it? Perhaps we should view what's happened here in London as a measure of what may happen at home. Yes. Like a Scotland Yardstick. I wonder how policemen would feel listening to the way this juror speaks about the force. I mean, he already did. Hmm. Maybe we do have evidence after all. Or people? Let's save and find out. Let's fast forward a little bit through this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. Oh? I must warn you that it- that I firmly believe it's only war is to trust men in white coats. Sick of in your jet black outfit. My- my outfit's not black. I don't mind admitting to a sense of trepidation here. So you don't trust anyone in black? Looking in the mirror must be very tiring. <laughs> I'm sure we can figure it out. I do have some some evidence that proves the waxwork was inside the that bird cage, namely. Maybe the head? Take that! No, it's not the head. Hmm, maybe I don't have evidence yet. Or maybe I do and I just don't know which one to present. That means it must have crashed through the crystal tower. Wait, where did we find- wait. Oh, I'm dumb. I, I, I know now what it is. I know what it is now. I completely forgot. The crystal shard. I completely forgot about the crystal shard that was inside the waxworks pocket. I completely forgot about this. It's literally right here. What's that? A piece of glass. Kirby and the crystal shard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fraud and a sham and I'm, I'm going to be sent to jail. Was that a piece of glass? Though it's unusually thick for glass. Yes, it's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket of the waxwork. As you say, it's not ordinary glass though. It's very thick and clearly made for extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the crystal tower. A crystal to Holy smoke! Exactly! The centerpiece of the Great Exhibition, where the very incident we're talking about took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell from above and smashed through a window of that special glass. From whence the small the small piece originated, is that it? I want to see how Van Zeeks can try to disprove this. Because I genuinely don't think he can disprove, like, how a glass shard from the crystal tower ended up in the pocket of a waxwork. Like, there's just no way. Precisely. So, what do you say? Now that clear evidence in support of the assertion has been placed before you. As I said, 
I only trust men in white coats as a rule, however. When the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color should come into it. Heh. <laughs> in light of what you've shown me here, yes, I feel obligated to change my position on the matter. So now it's 3 3? Oh, not yet. The presence of the piece of glass leaves me in a little doubt that the waxwork was indeed inside the birdcage. Thank you for reconsidering your position, sir. Your words are misplaced, boy. My opinion is governed by logic and science and nothing else. Yes, science is where you should di direct your words of gratitude. Ah. Hmm? Hmm? Is he waiting for me? What's the matter with you? Too good to say some words of thanks to the mother of all academic subjects? What is it about scientists? Honestly. <laughs> oh, I see what I have to do now. I keep pressing the wrong button. Maybe these two? Objection. Yeah, there we go. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious! To whose statements do you refer, Council? If you could put down your corn for a second, for a moment, juror number five. Please put the corn down. Oh, you mean me? You've pointed out that it's wrong to make an accusation without evidence. But the accusation that the waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence, as the defense demonstrated to the jurors sitting beside you. Oh, is that right? Would it be fair to say you didn't follow the argument? I don't understand much besides Colonel Cobb, to be honest. Well... That's how I feel right now. Of course you don't. If I could interject here. Please do, sir. Now that this assertion of yours about the waxwork has been backed up by some old solid evidence, it would be wrong of me as a man of science not to pursue the matter further. Thank you. At least he has somewhat of a brain. Oh, well, me too, then! Sorry? If this brainy gentleman says he's right, then he must be. See, I, um... I wouldn't dream of going against Colonel Cobb or anyone who's got stuff in between the ears! What? What? <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> Success! If you can call it that. Thank you, Council. That will do. As a result of the summation examination, the jury's overall leaning has changed. Okay. That's how I feel. Yeah, I say, okay. <laughs> that one Saitama face. Okay. <laughs> Two jurors now call guilty against four who call not guilty. Accordingly, the court has failed re to reach consensus at this time. And the trial must continue. We... we did it! Oh, well done, Mr. Narhodo! Another wonderful victory! Are we gonna hear an objection yet? No? Okay. Hmm. A waxwork of the despicable professor. Used as a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the waxwork of the professor that links Mr. Drebber and Dr. Scythe. And I'm convinced that there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad! I really don't! The truth, sir. By using evidence and testimony. Hmph! <laughs> 
if the court is to delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case. Then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned. <gasps> to spells! To spells! My wife! The owner? Madam to spells. Yes! <laughs> Bring her here! Bring her here! Bring her here! I, I really thought that Lord Van Zeeks would object to this whole line of inquiry. <laughs> Very well, I concur. Make arrangements for Madame Tispels to appear as a witness with immediate effect. <laughs> Woman pretty. <laughs> Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, yes? You should know that you're on the brink of opening Pandora's box. We're gonna dig up some painful memories for the guy, aren't we? We're gonna we're gonna dig up some angst, aren't we? The court shall now adjourn for forty-five minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for for taking the stand. Madame to spells, yes. I shall see to it at once, my lord. She's so pretty! Ooh, to be continued. Well, that... You have six, six, six sapitos? Nice. Hi, Sholmes! Ah! The Knight Errant himself! Oh. Have you been watching from the gallery, Mr. Sholmes? I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. Courtroom trials are fascinating affairs, as a spectator at least. I'm glad you've been enjoying yourself. I... I have to ask... What on earth is going on?! It makes no sense! What's this professor business all about?! He doesn't look like any professor I've ever met before! Who even is he?! Ah, uh, of course. You were in Germany already ten years ago. Yes, the professor. When I discovered he was the one who had been abducted, a sense of foreboding stirred within me. But who knew the monster would come knocking at, on, at your door? My heartfelt sympathies! <laughs> As it turns out, Lord Van Zeeks is even more intimately tied to this case than any of us realize, isn't he? Yes, how true. His great friend from university in the dark. And now a waxwork of the killer who took, the, who took his esteemed brother's life makes an appearance too. I imagine even the shrewd Mr. Reaper failed to foresee that kick in the teeth. Thinking indeed! An extraordinary move on your part, my dear fellow, to throw that in front of a man. You make it sound deliberate. I can't help feeling that this professor case is really very puzzling. Oh yes, in what particular manner? Well. There's Mr. Drebber, Dr. Scythe, and Lord Van Zeeks. A bunch of goths! It seems that everybody in the trial has a link to the case somehow. Yes. In fact, I alone am not a member of the set! Oh, that leaves me as an empty seat, as an empty set. All alone with no intersection to any other. Excuse me. Eh? Oh! Hi! Y y y you D D Dr. Scythe! Ah, Dr. Courtney Scythe. Nay, Stevens. Good day to you. Hello, Shams. That was very shrewd of you. What in particular, pray? You requested that ten-year-old autopsy report from Gregson, didn't you? Why would you assume such a thing? 
because Gregson told me. Hmm. Do you think it's been ten years? Ten years in the laboratory, using my scalpel. I smell of nothing but corpses and disinfectant. A policeman on the jury had a lot to say about you as it happens, Dr. Scythe. And I've accused you of being complicit in what happened. I'm hoping that you'll take the stand and tell the truth about what really happened. That certainly won't be possible. Lord Van Zeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Eh? Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you are warned about is the, is the Professor case. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information up about it out of me. But attempting to hide from the truth, that's cowardice! I've always fought crime in the way that I see fit. I have no regrets. None at all. And that's all I came here to say. So, good day to you. I like your theme. She mentioned it too. This Pandora's box. Whatever does it all mean? There's really no cause for concern, I assure you. When the trial resumes, the meaning will become all too apparent, whether you'd like it to or not. Huh? Now then, I believe it's almost time. I must make my way back to the public gallery. The edge of my seat awaits. I think maybe you're enjoying yourself a little too much. Ah, yes. One word of warning before I go. If, in the course of the trial this afternoon, you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth, don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. To the bitter end, you understand? Do not falter, whatever may come to pass. Alright, I understand. Thank you. Good. I shall make myself scarce then. I purchased a bar of caramel earlier, so I shall be gnawing on that as a, as you gnaw away at the truth. Hey, the caramel! Wait, did, was it called Shalm's Caramel? What did that warning from Sh Mr. Shalm's really mean, I wonder? Especially the bit about whatever may come to pass. Hmm. Seeing candy bar make me hungry. It made me a little hungry too. I might BRB for a quick second to go grab a snack. So give me one second. I will be right back. I will have the game music playing. So it's not like blah blah blah. So I'll be right back. Don't worry. I'll be right back.
Fortnite don't call a yippee! Hello, I'm back. <laughs> I have my snack. Ugh. It's time for the final chapter then. I'm determined to find the truth. No matter what. I wonder what's gonna happen. Hmm. also ready <laughs> I call smash mouth to the stand as the court is aware the case under our scrutiny began with a damaging incident at the great exhibition yes we now find ourselves embroiled in the details of a convicted felon who was sent to the gallows a decade ago this trial has certainly defied all expectation as seems to be the fate of all trials in which this Neponese is involved, my lord. So then, let us begin our exploration at, of the defense's assertion that the waxwork was 
cardinally, cardinally involved in this matter. Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. Are we still waiting to the arrival of Madame to Spells? Not at all. She is in the antechamber as we speak and ready to be summoned. Bring her. Bring my wife. Bring her in, my wife. Bailiff, show Madame to Spells to the stand. Things are about to become a lot more intense. Look at the mouse! Look at the mouse on Ryunosuke's shoulders! <laughs> yes, the model of the professor. That's the key to the link between these otherwise unrelated individuals. They're both goth, so... It's a tenuous link, admittedly, but at present, it's all we have to go on. There she- Oh. My god. <laughs> She's being- Oh my god! What is she doing? They're both gods, so they both must do crime? Yeah, that's right. Haven't you ever heard of be gay do crimes? And most goths are gay, so... <laughs> State your name and occupation for the court, please. My name is Madame Esmeralda de Spells. I am a waxwork artisan. And the proprietor of the Madame de Spells Museum of Waxwork. You will have to pardon me for working as I testify. My new exhibit must must open very soon. Soy gay. You that mean? Me too. Uh, uh. Oh, so he finally gets a statue, does he? Now there are two of them in the world. Oh my! What expression is she carving onto that face? A number of days ago, a particular waxwork model was stolen from your museum. Can you confirm this? Oui, that is true. At first, we believed it had been kidnapped. A waxwork model? Kidnapped? Yes, my lord. There was a demand for ransom money left behind by the culprit. However, according to what I have just been told outside the courtroom, that was not the true reason. I understand it was utilized as a substitute for the body of a murder victim. At present, that is no more than conjecture proposed by the defense. This is the victim of the case in question, Mr. Odie Asman. But of course, I know him well. He is part of a my odious personages, personages exhibit. Oh, is that the fucking pun with his name? Odious man? Oh my fucking god. I can't believe it took me that long to realize it. <laughs> oh, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> That's stupid. That's dumb. I did this to say what is evident, but Mr. Asman does not resemble the professor at all. Yes, but perhaps... Perhaps our faces are very similar. Are you suggesting that we should see now the damasked visage of the professor? I have here the key, but it is strictly forbidden to open the lock. That is absurd! Pardon? I don't know what face you've carved onto your fancy figure beneath that mask. But clearly, it won't be that of the actual killer. Indeed. 
That man's identity was never made public, after all. The trial took place in a closed court. The proceedings were strictly confidential. The condemned man was summarily executed. His identity remains a closely guarded national secret. There is no possible way that a rep repository of tawdry exhibits could get its hands on that information. Adamash. It would seem you are unaware of the Tospel's principles. Oh. What principles? The family of the spells has always prided itself on sculpting its models a la perfection. Every detail, including the visage, is fashioned with complete infidelity. Et voila, our principles. Principles that she's hot! <laughs> There is a well-known legend about the Tispel's waxworks from the time of the French Revolution. Principles that she's cute, yeah. <laughs> a member of the Tispel's family is said to have made a waxwork of the queen who was executed. Oui, that is true. It was a century ago now. I believe the queen's face was carved in the minutes following her death, actually at the guillotine site. You are correct. The model is on display to still today in the House of Horrors. We dispels will stop at nothing to obtain a faithful replica of our subjects. Dear me. Uh, somewhat disturbing tenacity of purpose. It is the only way to obtain a truly lifelike representation of the subject. And it has been my family's secret for generations. Do, do you mean to say that... Beneath that mask. Oui. The two visage of the killer is there. This is ludicrous. It is out of the question. The professor spread terror throughout Great Britain. As a result, the Madame Dispel's special exhibit remains extremely popular even today. The killer, emerging from his own grave. It is a sight to behold. You should come. I think, madam, it would be beneficial to hear your formal testimony on this matter. You will explain every detail of this macabre model, and your personal involvement in its creation. With pleasure. I like her. I like her a lot. She's probably one of my favorite characters in this case. She's so good. The special exhibit in the House of Horrors is based on a rumor that shocked society in London. An impression of the visage was taken directly from the corpse, in accordance with the spell family principles. I enlisted the aid of a grave digger, and created a mold of the head in the cemetery just before the interment. I hid myself until it gave me a signal. I was there for a very long time that night. As dawn approached, I was very worried that I could be discovered. So she's a grave digger? The Grave Digger? The man- well, not Grave Digger, I mean, I, I mixed it up with Grave Robber, but then again, she's not even that either. <laughs> but dang, talk about dedication to your craft. She literally had someone dig up a corpse. That's impressive in a way, if a little morbid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She might be a grave digger, but I can be a gold digger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. Oui. I will do all that is necessary to achieve the true resemblance my family is celebrated for. Nobody else knew. Only the grave digger. What harm did it do? So you truly saw it. The face of the of the face of that monster. Naturally, I was aware at the time that his identity was a secret. But the spells would not be the spells if we did not insist on absolute fidelity to our sculptors. I don't believe this. 
I myself have seen the special exhibit at your museum, madam. A truly blood curdling scene, in which the murderer is emerging from his own grave. The scene at the Pex was the subject of many rumours in London ten years ago. I have your newspaper from that time. You just keep that? Ooh! That's a really cool picture! Or rather, like, an artist depiction. That's really cool! <laughs> That's so cool! I hope we keep- I hope we get that as evidence. The special exhibit was based on the picture in this article. Me like, yeah! You know what it reminds me a little bit? Wait- <gasps> Do you guys see what I see? In the corner of the picture! That signature! account of what happened, as supported by the eyewitness who saw it. Okay, yeah, give me that. I need to examine that right away. Shut up. I don't care what you have to say. Newspaper. <gasps> this got very interesting. There's Drever. Oh, the camera's open, which means he took a picture. Mr. Drebble's- Mr. Drebber's dreadful encounter. I wonder if I can read. <laughs> I kinda wanna try to read what the art- what the- what the rest of the newspaper says. Uh, man rises from grave, executed criminal returns in the dead of night. At Lowgate Cemetery, just behind the prison, on the night of the foul demon's execution, the new, the newly, the newly entered professor forced off his grave cover as he, as he witnessed the scene was on the verge of raising a shriek. I am very sus. <laughs> so. This is a newspaper article of, like, the whole thing with, like, the professor coming out of his grave. And it's, like, an artist's depiction based on, like, witness testimony. And look at the signature at the bottom. Where have we seen that name before? Oh, Asmin. And before you say anything, it's the exact same signature on the contract. So, Asmin is also involved in the professor case. In some way, he is also connected. How and why? I have no fucking idea. But we're gonna find out. I can't. I kind of want to read that article because we can. We can read it. There's. There's like writing in it. I want to see what else I can get from it. Uh, da da. Uh, shriek. When in the next second a gun. A gunshot rang out suddenly from behind. The bullet pierced the resurrected man's chest, whose breaths were then stilled. Once more, the youth then finally released the scream he had been holding and ran for his life. The university student who experienced this shock, shocking event is Mr. Enoch Drebber, a disciple of science at the University of London and a resident of its student dorms. A gunshot? Huh. Okay, that's also really interesting. <clears throat> so, the professor was executed, he came back to life, then he was shot. Huh. <clears throat> Mad Sheep Rampage. Unexplained phenomena grips Oxford region. Local reported of most remarkable circumstance in which folded sheep were seized with a sudden fright. I left the blah 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 blah. Charles Darwin to receive Comblay Medal. 
Uh, this year's recipient of the Royal Society's most prestigious award is Mr. Charles Darwin for his highly important contributions and research in the field of geology, zoology, and, uh, and botanical physiology. Mr. Darwin joins the ranks of the monumental figures of blah, 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 blah. Mad sheep disease? Is that mad sheep disease? <laughs> Uh, let's see. The Great Stink Parliament is f is to finally address the foul issue. After many years, Parliament has at long last resolved and to relieve stench that carries on the slightest breeze and lingers in the nostrils of every man, woman, and child. The Great Sewer System uh is to be built i'm sorry i'm reading like all this stuff that is obviously not related but it's very it's like interesting to me that they actually wrote all this down i'm really curious about it so i'm kind of like going through it uh was the ball mass to blame for the great blaze the fire that engulfed the popular theater uh continues to draw attention as reports that her majesty queen victoria herself visited royal italian opera to inspect the site and offered words of condolences to the theater's owner, Mr. Frederick Guy. The theater had been under a lease to famed magician John Henry Anderson, and there is some speculation that the blame the fire lies squarely with him for his instances on holding his bow mask there. Could this could his magical tricks have played a trick on him, causing the city a great center causing the city the great center for the arts? The investigation into the true cause is expected to continue into next month, if not beyond, according to sources. Krakatoa eruption. And that's all there is. The unrelated relations must be related to related relations. <laughs> but, okay, so we now have a clue of Mr. Asbin being involved, so that's gonna be, like, a question. <clears throat> Man rises from the grave. It's too absurd for words. The public enjoys absurdity, Monsieur. That is why I have reproduced the scene as carefully as possible in my museum. And it's a waxwork from the exhi that exhibit that was stolen some days before the incident at the Great Exhibition, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'll find it. I'll get to the bottom of what really happened. I'll prove that Mr. Scythe and Drebber were in on this crime together. It's based on a rumor that the shock society in London. <clears throat> an impression. Da -da -da -da. I enlisted in aid of a grave of the grave digger and created a mold for the head in the cemetery. Da -da 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 -da. Hold it! Surely that's illegal, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> It would seem the proprietress of this repository of novelties was blinded by monetary greed. It had nothing to do with money. The man, in, the man is part of London's criminal history. That is why I had to sculpt him, to record this history. It is a raison de... de I don't know how to say that word, I don't know French. Raison de toi, I, I think? Raison de toi? Raison de toi? I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, of the, the Spells Museum. But if the man was convicted in a closed court and sent for immediate execution, then surely nobody but the members of the judiciary present know the killer's true identity. I assure you, behind that mask is hidden the true face of the professor. 
Do you realize what you're saying? The professor's identity is a national secret! I understand. And now that the truth about the special exhibit has been revealed, it must perhaps close. Of course it will. As will the entire museum if you don't tread very carefully, madam. That could be another interesting chapter in the history of my family, I think, don't you? So ten years ago, on the night of the professor's execution, you took a wax impression of his face from the corpse? Oui, exactement. I hid myself until he gave me a signal. I was there for a very long time that night. You were there f longer than you expected to be. I had some difficulties in capturing the subject's form correctly. As I removed the mask, the mouth of the cadaver fell open, and I had some problems with the chin. Eh? Dare I ask? The man had been dead for a short while uh, already, you see. His mu muscles were relaxing, and consequently, his chin would not align himself correctly. <laughs> what a horrible thought! Under normal circumstances, I would have an assistant with me. However, that night I was alone. And as a consequence, I missed my preferred window of time. Very much so. What do you mean? When I take the impression of the visage of a cadaver, I always wait until three hours after death. Why three hours? Is that amount of time significant? It is because of rigor mortis. Mortis. Uh, Wrigley mortis? <laughs> it's the name given to a phenomenon that occurs in recently deceased bodies. As a rule, three hours post-death, the muscles in the body begin to stiffen. By approximately 10 hours post-death, the entire body is completely rigid and inflexible. And then from that point on, the, mu the muscles slowly start to revert to, its mo to their relaxed state. The effect is often used to estimate the time of death when a body is discovered. Well, that was an education, if a slightly scary one. As the mademoiselle says, rigor mortis commences three hours after death, and it starts in the jaw. I see. So that's why you wait. Before that time, the mouth falls open. It is very difficult to do my work. Ugh. It's getting hard for me to do my work with all this talk of corpses. Hmm. I wonder about that information the courts just heard about Madness' spells. Uh, it's significant, I would say. Um, the information about rigor mortis that you must, that you just shared with us. Would you mind including it in your formal testimony? I believe it could be significant. You see. Of course, I do not mind at all. I can't help feeling that after this latest topic, the atmosphere in the courtroom has become extremely grave. <laughs> this is no time for jokes, Mr. Sato. <laughs> Madam, kindly amend your testimony as discussed. Yes, sir. It took me a very long time because it was before the onset of the Gamotes. Uh, wait, do we, we have the autopsy report. Does it say time? Death by hanging confirmed at midnight. Okay, confirmed at midnight, okay? So we know he was hung at midnight. So if she's saying that uh, she waits three hours for rigor mortis to set in. That would she would have to have been like at three a.m. 
but she's saying that the jaw was still like very bleh. It was like relaxed, so uh, I would say rigor mortis like come and went, or rigor mortis hadn't started yet. That's my. I'm guessing it hadn't started yet. <coughs> Sorry, midnight death. <laughs> Rigor mortis being the phenomenon you described, whereby the corpse becomes stiff after death? I think you said that it starts at the jaw, about three hours post-death. Is that right? Why does rigor mortis happen? I'm curious. Oui, c'est ça. Of course, the exact duration depends a little on the season. Ugh. I didn't realize a waxwork artisan would be so well-versed in the subject. No, no. That is only elementary knowledge in the field of legal medicine. Well, I had no idea about it. And maybe I won't admit to my ignorance for forensic science. Maybe it's just a corpse thing. Hmm. I could ask my father to give you a very simple primer if you like. Rigor mortis is... Rigor mortis happens when the glucose of the, mu the, glucose of the muscles is used up and the lack of blood to replace it, the muscles harden. Think like sugar becoming sugar cubes. Ah, okay. I get it. I think corpses should be your domain. I'm not good with them. Science is very cool. Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh dear. I'll do my very best. Mm, Mortis. Oh, I love that sprite so much. <laughs> She's so pretty. <sighs> As dawn approached, I, I was very worried that I would be discovered. Hold it. You say that dawn was approaching? What was the time of day then? Uh, approximately. Well, I could not say. But when I left the cemetery with my utensils and wax, the morning light was becoming visible. The execution took place on the 17th, which had the earliest sunrise of the year. Thank you! I would appreciate the head pats. I enjoy head pats. There is actually a little... If you have better twitch.tv, uh, there is a little emote you can do. I believe if you type pixel pat, uh, this happens. <laughs> so if you have BTTV installed, uh, you can give me head pats through there, if you would like. Oh, but thank you. I appreciate the head pat. <laughs> the execution took place on the 17th June, which had the earliest sunrise of that year. Indeed it did. First light would have been around 4.30 in the morning. First pixel crab. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll make it one day. It really is early. Maybe I can make like a like a little animated emote like based on like have you seen that the gif of the of the really fat rat being grabbed and shaken around? It could be that. <laughs> I can make something like with that. <laughs> with like a realistic hand. <laughs> You're gonna have beef with me? I'm just a little guy. I love that gift so much. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> the fact is that I had very little time, so I finished my work in a in a half hour. Dang, she works fast. It was necessary to complete the impression and bury the body before daybreak, of course. If somebody had discovered me there, it would have been a catastrophe. So I had to hurry. Is it me? Or does Mr. Sholmes seem to be taking shape more quickly now, too? Hmm. You certainly appeared to go to extraordinary lengths for your work, madam. I wonder. She said particularly significant? Yes. Madam, those details about how long it took you to complete the sculpture, and about early sunrise. Could you include them in your testimony? 
I believe they may be significant. Of course. If you would like me to. She's a very cooperative witness. You're quite right, Mr. Naruto, though it is intriguing. A sunrise at four in the morning would be absolutely unimaginable at home, wouldn't it? That's not quite what I meant by significant. Yeah, she really... well... She kinda did, in a way. She isn't accused of anything, so she really doesn't have anything to hide. She's pretty much confessing to something that she did. She did kinda... Kinda, technically, not really, but sort of... Sneakily... About the murder, not the grave digging. <laughs> I guess. She's not innocent, either. Like, completely. But... Yeah, she really doesn't have anything to hide, so I guess that has to do why she's so why she's so cooperative. It's funny how my favorite witnesses or my favorite characters so far have been the people and witnesses that have been cooperative, like to spells and and Quinby, and coincidentally, they're both very hot women. <laughs> to spells. I am about to dig up this corpse to make some money, but of course I am! <laughs> am I about to dig up this corpse to make some money? But of course I am! <laughs> I'm... I am digging up corpses, and nobody can stop me! Ah! <laughs> That's nice. That was a pretty fancy pun. Retweet if you're hot and cooperative. <laughs> like this post if you are hot and cooperative. <laughs> Hurried and finished my work. And then I left as soon as I had the corpse interred. Hmm. Like, 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 like. <laughs> <laughs> this took a turn. Hold it. <laughs> I am pretty down bad for her as well. Um, um, I, I agree with you on that. She's so fucking pretty. I can't stand it. <laughs> hmm. Now I'm thinking, though. Is she? I mean, you played this game. You know more than anyone else. But now I'm thinking. So, alright. Let let's review the evidence really quick here. So, we know for a fact that, um, that death happened at midnight. Midnight, exactly. That is, that is, like, official. And she's saying that it takes three hours for rigor mortis to start setting in. Uh... So it would have to be like 3 a.m. for her for like it to like start acting up. But that only gave to spells like maybe an hour to or 30 minutes to work. But she's saying that when she dug up the body, the the jaw was like slack. Maybe did I misread or do, or does like does the muscle only like soften up after ten hours, or is it like the like it started but they weren't like really like stiff yet? Hmm. She can be like, oh, oh I must take your guts for authenticity. 
I see my brain is dead. Just like the corpses in this game. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba well, to be fair, Anti, like, that's not... That, she doesn't do that. The... Dr. Scythe does that, though. And even though she's probably guilty of crime, I kind of think she's hot, too. She's also a mom. I just like women, honestly. <laughs> hi, Bull! Hi, 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 hi. My wife is on the stand. And we're talking about corpses and hot women. <laughs> Mil- <laughs> I mean, you love that. <laughs> you have a reason to believe you might be discovered once the sun came up or something? <laughs> I just love women. <laughs> I love women, okay? I like girls. I. Uh, <laughs> Girl, p p pretty. <laughs> I'm like that fucking- I'm like that picture of the person like being interviewed and they're just like blushing really hard and they're, and they're like g g Girl, pretty. We are not bringing Mothos to here. Bull, I will time you out. I am not joking. <laughs> I will time you out. I am dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, don't worry about it. Don't even talk about it. It's nothing. 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 <laughs> no! Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna get a beat you, Ella. Okay, so, so, so in the last Bug Fables stream, we encountered a character called Kali, and she was really cute, uh, like, belly dancer kind of moth girl, and I really liked her design, and I was trying to, like, make her, like, turn around, because I wanted to see, her, like, her back sprite, because I wanted to see her wings. Because I thought, like, you could see Leaf's wings, you could see, like, his back. So I thought, maybe I could do that with her. So I was trying to, like, make her turn around, and everyone kept thinking I was looking at her ass. <laughs> I just wanted to see her wings, but everyone kept thinking I was looking at her ass. I just wanted to see her wings! <laughs> I just wanted to see her wings, I swear! But everyone kept saying I was trying to look at her butt! It's not true! Thank you, Emma Gamer! <laughs> I was just trying to look at her wings! I wanted to see what they were like! Because you could see Leaf's wings! And I figured, oh man, I wonder what hers look like! But the game wouldn't let me! So I was just like waddling around back and forth trying to get her to, like, to see her back sprite and everyone kept thinking I was trying to look at her butt! You can't even see her butt clearly! She has a big thorax in the way! <laughs> Why would I want to look at her butt when you can't even see any of the characters' butts? <laughs> I'm gonna- I'm gonna destroy you all. <laughs> jail. 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 All of you go to jail. You're all banned. Be gone. <laughs> Her name was Kali, like, K-A-L-I. She's a character in Bug Fables, and she's like a moth, and she looks like a, like a belly dancer, and she's really, and she's really cute. I like her. Thank you, I need a lawyer. <laughs> Thank you, please help me. <laughs> please help me. Oh, uh, let me get, let me get, eat my snacky in peace before I die. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Go 
still say that. What the fuck? Please. I'm not that kind of gamer. I'm not that kind of gamer. I look at women respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> I look at them respectfully. <laughs> oh my god! I... <laughs> Why? Why of all things to happen? Why clip that? <laughs> I'm going to sink into a hole. I've been trying to see wings and not ass. I'm innocent. <laughs> Thank you. Ugh. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna keep playing before I explode from embarrassment. But with the morning light, I knew that, that the warden from the prison would commence his patrol of the area. Of the area. Couldn't you just have paid off the warden too then? She's not made of money. Yeah, you can use the emotes now. What the fuck? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just a little guy. I'm just a small little guy. If you're gonna have beef with me, I'm just a little guy for shame. <laughs> I had already paid the grave digger, as I as I said. You cannot buy the silence of everyone. Or the secret is no longer a secret, huh? The sunrise was at 4.40 a.m. that day. Which means that it would have been around 4 when you began sculpting your work. Mm hmm, 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 that must be correct. That would be when the grave digger. <laughs> every time, every time, it just catches me by surprise. <laughs> that would be correct. That would be when the grave digger gave me the signal to come out of hiding. So that's all I have to go on. What's your feeling, Mr. Naruhodo? For some reason, Dr. Scythe went along with Mr. Dr with Drever's plan. Now, if that's really true, then the Professor is the only one thing we know of that links the pair of them. So I feel sure that waxwork would be the clue to this mystery somehow. Hmm. In that case, we must use this cross-examination to uncover exactly what it means. Otherwise, the jurors are sure to revert their leanings, and the trial will be over. I agree. But interestingly... Uncovering what the professor has to do with all of this means more to Lord Van Zeeks than anyone. Ah. That's the impression I'm getting, anyway. Yes, as do I. After all, he has a profound connection to the professor as well. Dead brother, dead brother, dead brother, dead brother, dead brother, dead brother. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. She doesn't really have anything to hide, so I might as well press her on everything. Hmm. A ten year old turn right now, but one that no Londoner would, uh, would ever forget. Ah, right. I know just what you're talking about, I think. Of course. It couldn't be anything else. Yes. That story would never disappear. 
the tale of the condemned killer rising from the dead. That is the central attraction of my house of horrors. Oof. Oh, thank you. Nom nom nom. I do have a snack with me. Oh. Hmm. The rumor was whispered all over the city, and it was like this. Oh shit. It was in Low Gate Cemetery, behind the prison, in the dead of night, after the execution of the killer. The interred professor slid back the stone slab, covering his tomb, and emerged from his grave. A young man who witnessed this felt a scream welling up inside him. But an instant later, he heard an ear-splitting gunshot from over his shoulder. The bullet struck the emerging corpse, and he fell motionless once more. The scream finally found its way from the mouth of the young witness, who turned and ran for his life. Oh yeah, it is you, Oz! <laughs> the, the corpse climbed out of his own grave? And then somebody shot him? Who? Who was it? Nobody knows, even today. But remember, it was just a rumor. Perhaps nothing more than a ghost story. The good people of London, they love stories like this. That is why it was in every newspaper across the capital. So a dead man was brought back to life only to die immediately. You know, it's just like Frankenstein's monster. That's in my brain because I actually got one of the Junji Ito books today. Not today, the other day for Christmas. And one of them was Frankenstein. And it kind of makes me think of that a little bit. It's a really good book, by the way. I recommend it if you if you see it in a bookstore. Or any Junji Ito book. If you like horror stories, like horror manga, like obviously they're they're super good. I recommend them a lot. I have like five of the books now. Because I just keep buying more and more after getting my first one. Oh, did you make a don Oh what? Oh, did it not go off? Huh, hold on. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. It should go off. I wonder why. Let me see. I'm kind of glad that didn't go off. <laughs> I will strike you down when you stand inside, but thank you for the five dollars. I appreciate it. I send you much love your way. <laughs> Uzumaki is one of the best manga ever. I really, really want to read it. I've heard about it, and I want to read it so bad, but I haven't found it yet. I know it's, it's like, it's getting, like, an anime adaptation, like, for Adult Swim. And I saw the trailer for it, and it looks so good. It looks really, really good. <laughs> Thank you. I have not. I have not read it. I'm still trying to get all the books. I haven't read Uzumaki, or Gyo, or Tomie. Like, those are the big ones I can think of that I haven't read. The books I have are... Frankenstein, I have Shiver, uh, Remina, uh, Blind Spot in Venus, and... Did I say Fragments of Horror? Fragments of Horror, Remina, Blind, Blind Spot in Venus. Shiver and Frankenstein. Yeah, okay, yeah. I read. I read a lot, actually. I just... I'm very picky with what I read. I read a lot. But I'm just very picky with the things I like to read. Yeah, I like reading... I like... I mostly like reading manga because... It's like... 
it doubles as a story and also a really good art book that serves as inspiration for, for my art as well. Like sometimes I just like looking at the pictures. It's like, oh wow, this looks cool. I wanna I wanna try to draw like this someday. I don't think I can really capture Jinji Ito's style no matter how much I practice though. The man details like crazy. But I still like looking at him. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Exactly. It's for big brain. It's for big brains like us. If I don't read like manga uh, or comics, I usually just read like fan fiction on my phone. <laughs> I don't read a lot of fan fiction though, because I'm also very picky with that. I think the most fan fiction I've read for anything uh, is probably Hollow Knight fanfics. And now recently Bug Fables, because I've been liking the stuff I've been finding. And I kind of want to try to write stuff myself, but eh. Maybe another time. Yes, exactly. That's how I feel, Tiger Zodiac. I have a couple... I have a few manga books here. My sister actually used to collect the Sailor Moon comics. I say comics because they're, it's like it's like back when uh, when manga was like translated to English, but they translated it to make to give it like comic book format. But I have a bunch of those in my closet, so I like and sometimes I like going through like I like grabbing them out of my closet and just looking through all like the the Sailor Moon drawings and pictures. Speaking of both fables, you completed a very heartwarming quest on hard. Ooh. Favorite genre fanfic, Achi's. You know, fair, fair. I really like Achi's fanfic. It's really good. I, in fact, I, I tend to draw fan art for it too. But yeah, I'm, I've been getting distracted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <clears throat> We're playing video game. That is why I never, that is why it was in every newspaper across the capital. But, but, was it just a story? I mean, this is exactly the scene that can be seen today at your museum, isn't it? Lee, the special exhibit was modeled on that very illustration. For a while afterwards, the contents of that article were reproduced in every newspaper imaginable. Madam, might I say something? Please go ahead, mademoiselle. When something is described as a rumor, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is entirely made up. I believe that often, rumors contain elements of the truth. Ah, I see that people from the East can be just as astute as people of Europe. <coughs> can we be sure, for instance, that the professor's execution was successful? Ooh! That is an... Excellent point, actually. <clears throat> I mean, have there been cases of people surviving hangings? I think there have been, right? It's not common, but I don't think it's impossible. It is not possible for the dead to come back to life. Sorry? Ten years ago, I was there in Lowgate Cemetery. After the criminal known as the Professor was killed by hanging. They're rare, but they have happened before. Yeah. I took a wax impression of his visage from the corpse just before it was endowed. It's not impossible, just challenging. Yeah. <coughs> so I can assure you, the man was dead. Oh, okay. But it is possible for someone to get possessed by the dead spirit via spirit channeling. Oh, we won't mention that yet? Okay. <laughs> nah, that's not this game. That's not this game. We don't have that in this game. The phase aren't here. It would certainly appear that the condemned man suffered the intended fate. I mean, he if he didn't die from the hanging, he died from the gunshot either way. <clears throat> Oof. An impression of the visitor was taken directly from the corpse in accordance with the Tuspel's family principles. Hold it! Is, is that true of every waxwork in your museum then? Okay, have a good snacky. It is, assuming the subject is dead of course. Live subjects have to cooperate in a similar way. 
I have letters from imprisoned criminals all the time, you know. What sort of letters? When my time comes, please make a waxwork of me. Come here, son. She gets commissions. No! My museum is famous, monsieur. To be made into a waxwork is an honor. And for some criminals, a symbol of status, even. Because nothing says hardened criminal better than wax. Hmm. And it is thanks to one killer in particular that my museum has gained such popularity in London. No! No snacks! I'm sorry. I refer to the style of the special exhibit, of course. The Professor. Whose form you claim to have captured by taking an impression from the actual corpse. There are no exceptions to the principles of the spells. <clears throat> I enlisted the aid of the gravedigger and had created a mold. I think I pressed this already. <clears throat> hmm. Mm. What am I supposed to do here exactly? I guess press everything? Hold it. Sure that that's illegal. Yeah, I pressed this. It took me a very long time to, before the onset of rigor mortis. Rigor mortis being the phenomenon, da 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 da. I've never played these types of games, and I think it's because I would be very terrible at it. They take they they take a bit. You have to really like read and study everything. But once something clicks, it feels so good. <laughs> it makes you feel smart and big brained. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. I left as soon as the corpse was interred. Hold it! Hmm. But with the morning light, I knew that the warden from the prison would commence his patrol. Couldn't you have just paid off the warden too? Not enough money, dude. <clears throat> oh, the secret is no longer a secret. The sunrise is 4.40 a.m. that day. Do-do-do. That wouldn't be the grave ticker. Da-da-da-da. That's all I have to go on. Hmm. <laughs> mood. Mood. Big mood. So we've pressed everything. Let's look at our evidence, see if there's anything interesting here. We have this, which is like the whole scene. Driver's contract. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mach the machine, the 
the professor's autopsy, the waxwork head, the trophy, the glass. There's the camera. We know that this camera has like <clears throat> has blood on it. Yeah, it has blood here. Which means this camo probably was the one that was like located in the actual moment. But there's no pictures inside. Yeah. I haven't really had to use this camera yet, but I feel like it's gonna come up. Uh... There's a picture of Drebber. Mmm... The birdcage. The photograph of the balloon. Screwdriver. Autopsy report. Photograph of the victim. Piece of green cloth, the crossbow, the sketch. The newspaper exhibition that I... Hmm... I'm trying to think... What can we do here? Oh wait, this is the one it's like- Alright, I'm gonna have to fast forward this. <laughs> okay, Encounters, thank you for stopping by. I think the- Okay. I hope you have a good night. I think if I can get it to be continued, uh, I can- I'll stop there. Thank you! The thing that rubs me the wrong way is the timeline. Because the timing doesn't seem right. There was a... Mm. This is the only thing that mentions the the rigor mortis, so... Or not the rigor mortis, the time of death. It would have to be 3 a.m., not 4. Yeah, yeah, I think this- this is the only thing I can think of, so... Let's see. Objection. Oh shit, I was right! <laughs> Madden to spells. Wee, thank you. Ooh. I have here an autopsy report that was filed ten years ago now. It confirms the death of the professor following his execution at the gallows. And is that the problem? I believe it is, because your testimony and a particular detail in the report completely contradict one another. Qua? Are you going to explain yourself, my Nipponese friend? According to her testimony, Madame de Spells was creating her wax impression just before dawn. And at, the, and at that time, rigor mortis had not yet set in. Yeah, that's right, she said that. That the jaw was like slack. Am I correct so far, madam? 
You are, yes. As I said, the stiffening of the jaw is the first sign of rigor mortis, two or three hours after death. But the man's chin was limp, so he cannot have been dead for a long time. But on the other hand, if you look at Dr. Scythe's report, it quite clearly states the following. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight. No! If the professor indeed died at midnight that day, then by the time you were sculpting his face, rigor mortis would have already have set in. We oui, yes, you are right. The chin, it would have been completely stiff. So... <laughs> midnight death. So, that gives me two possible conclusions. Either the report was wrong, or he wasn't dead. But, like, huh. Hmm. Or maybe something else entirely. In other words, the re this report is wrong. Objection. No coroner makes a mistake when recording the time of death. The very idea is absurd! In that case, there's only one possible conclusion. The execution didn't actually take place at the stated time. I'm impossible! You're gonna go with he wasn't dead. Yeah, I think he wasn't dead. That's the only way to explain him coming out of the grave. Order! Order! Council, this is beyond folly! Not only do you indict the author of the report, Dr. Scythe, but you also implicate member of the staff at ba Barclay Prison, where the execution took place? What the heck? Extraordinary! Not my day! My learned friend appears to have overlooked one very crucial fact. What's- what fact? The professor died that night, without question. He did, of course he did. I moved the man's limp jaw with my own hands. There was no- Yes, the professor died that night. But what if he didn't die at the gallows? Didn't die? Are you insane? The gunshot! The gunshot! What, what exactly are you suggesting did happen in that case? The fu- Oh! That's the- Yes! Yes! That's it, isn't it? He got shot! Council present the evidence at once. The evidence did the 10 year old article. The Sholmes died. Achi! Achi! Hi, 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 hi! He's not dead, but he's made of wax now. See, guys, reading is useful. Yeah, reading is useful. <laughs> hopefully, after we get it to be continued, I can wrap up. And hopefully, it's soon, because it's getting late. What happened that night is written very plainly in this newspaper article. Executed criminal returns in the dead of night at local cemetery. You're suggesting it was a corpse coming back from the dead now? Well, if this article is to be believed, yes. The professor, assumed dead following his execution, emerged from his grave and was killed again. No, I'll save that for my birthday. <laughs> Hi, next time! I'm not gonna be- I, I, the only time I would have like a super long stream is for my birthday. Which is like in February. I have a lot of- uh, I have a lot of things like ideas planned for that. I think it would be fun. It'd be funny. Objection. Don't be a fool. That's simply a rumor. Published by the gutter press. Can you be certain of that? Are you serious? The point is- as the article says, there was a witness to what happened. Birthday subathon? Maybe. Maybe. I'm thinking about it. I did make a list of things I would love to do for my birthday. Whether I get the courage to actually do them, or the time, uh, knowing my 
my poopy internet and luck. We'll see. No! <laughs> my word, yes indeed! Why did I do this? <laughs> what the fuck was that? My we! The young man who stole into who stole into the cemetery that by chance that night. Objection. Of course there was a witness. The story didn't write itself, but obviously the man made it all up. And in any case, it this was ten years ago now. There would surely be no hope of finding him. Objection. We know who it is. On the contrary, my lord, we all know this witness well. What? Are you suggesting, Council, that you've identified the person in question? That you know who claims to have seen these utterly incredible events took place? Yes, it falls on a Monday, unfortunately. It would have been so it would have been so neat if it fell on a Sunday, but sadly no. I'll have to ask for that day and possibly the day after off from work. Cause I feel like if I do the the, the big birthday stream, I'm going to be tired the next day. <laughs> yes, my lord. In fact, you could say that he's right here, before my very eyes. It's the fuck. It's motherfucking Drebber. The man in question is Mr. Enoch Drebber. Drebber? The sooner you ask for a time off, the better. Choo choo choo. One day to shit, the next day to wipe. <laughs> the previous witness! The special exhibit in the House of Horrors at Madame Dispel's Museum of Waxwork recreates the decade-old scene in perfect detail. The condemned criminal emerging from the grave, and beside the tomb, a young man with a lantern stumbling upon the terrifying sight. Oh, by the way, Emin, I go by I go by they them. I use they them pronouns, not she her. So just a heads up on that. <laughs> not young man. Dun dun dun. Hey, no problem. Is a ten year younger Mr. Enoch Drebber. He looks so weird without the white hair. Order! 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 Surely not, Council. Trevor was there? In Lowgate Cemetery? Um... What is all this to talk about, Mr. Trevor? Is the name significant? Of course, Madden Dispels doesn't know, does she? Yes, it's extremely significant, Madam. To your situation as well, in fact. What situation? The theft of the Professor Waxwork from your museum some days ago was perpetrated by the very same man. No! But... but that doesn't mean... Madame to spells. It would appear you know the name Enoch Dreba. Eh? Eh? Lee. Oui. Yes, I know it. But from long ago, in the past. Oh, oh, that's right, Archie. I don't think you've seen Tispels before. Esmeralda Tispels, she is very hot. <laughs> or are you talking about Van Zeeks? If you're talking about Van Zeeks, you are getting a timeout. <laughs> what? Oops, wrong button. Oh my. Good gracious. Explain yourself. I'm going to, to strangle you. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. You and your taste and awful men. <laughs> the story of the young man and the girl the sight he witnessed in the cemetery ten years ago was published in every single newspaper in London and throughout Great Britain. However, in all of the articles, the witness was simply described as a certain young man. What do you mean? I don't like Van Zeeks. What are you talking about? No details were published about his identity. His name was never revealed. 
have taste in women, that's true. <laughs> My taste in men often involves, uh... Dummies and dads. <laughs> Sometimes both. I have, do not have awful taste in men. What are you talking about? My taste in men is flawless. <laughs> that is, a part from in one newspaper. <laughs> The Daily Circus. It is the paper from which comes the article I have already shown in court. Name one! Name one! Name one! I dare you! You're saying that his full name was only publicized in that article? Goodness me, yes, here it is! The university student who experienced this shocking event is Mr. Enoch Trevor. Yeah! Yeah! Do it! Do it! Call me out! Call me out right now! <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. My brain is is empty right now. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. A disciple of the science of the universe, a, a disciple of science at the University of London, and a resident of its student dorms. Shit. <laughs> Okay, yeah, y you got me there. <laughs> okay, but in my defense, in my defense, Red isn't racist. <laughs> he could be worse. <laughs> when I read the article, I went to meet with the man. The discovery of the condemned criminal coming back to life in the cemetery in the dead of night. He, he is not. <laughs> Send me to the gallows. <laughs> Would make a perfect exhibit for my, for my hustle hers. Whether it was the truth or not. I see. So you went to meet Mr. Trevor in order to sculpt the waxwork of the man, did you? Exactly, man. He was studying science at the University of London in those days. He was just a poor student. I paid him five pounds to model for the waxwork. Ah! I'm dead. <laughs> and since that time, it has been in my museum to recreate the scene of terror from the cemetery. Well, that's all we're gonna get from her. They're doing the thing. It's like, this is the end of the, the whole, the whole shebang. So I believe that's all we're gonna get for her. And hopefully this will lead to a to be continued. I've technically reached the three hour mark. Even if the stream got interrupted, sadly. Phoenix at Max Galactica. As your lawyer, I can't defend you anymore. You suck. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so, ten years ago, a young man appealed to the public about an extraordinary event he'd witnessed. A criminal who had been put to death, re-emerging from his grave in the middle of the night. But the public treated his claims as nothing more than an amusing anecdote that was soon forgotten. No, you can't! <laughs> Good lawyer. Ooh. Thank you for being a good lawyer. We need more good lawyers. And years later, the same man steals a waxwork model of the executed criminal. Ostensibly to use as a body double for the victim in the case we're discussing here today. Even though the waxwork's build is a poor match for the victim, and its face is obscured by a mask. So the question is, why would the man do such a thing? <laughs> no, let's not talk about that. Which brings us to three days ago, when the birdcage crashed into the crystal tower. If the birdcage had in fact contained not the body of Mr. Asman, but the stat same waxwork, 
A coroner from Scotland Yard who investigated Dr. S who investigated Dr. Scythe would have noticed immediately. And yet, she submitted this autopsy report for the victim, which the court has seen earlier. Now you don't suck. His, his real name is Odie Asman? It's, it's like supposed to be a pun on an odious man because, you know, he's rich, I guess. Because <laughs> all Ace Attorney names are fucking puns. Why? Ass man. The man of ass. Because the waxwork was that of the professor. Is that what you're saying? Dr. Scythe put her name to a document confirming the death of a condemned criminal who was still alive. A criminal whose apparent resurrection was witnessed by Mr. Drebber. But that misconduct was a deadly secret the coroner would do anything to protect. Which is precisely why Mr. Drebber used that particular waxwork as the body double. Ah! Dramatic. My lord, this court must must sum summon. Oh, I, I, for some reason I was reading stummon. This court must summon Dr. Scythe to the stand. The defense is determined to find out exactly how the coroner and Mr. Drebber are connected. <laughs> but according to the missive I received this morning through the prosecutor's office, Dr. Scythe is unable to participate in these proceedings. Is that not the case? It's not that she can't participate. It's just that the court must summon a demon. Goth milf, goth milf, goth milf, goth milf. She told us herself, didn't she? Lord Van Zeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you were warned about. Is the, pun is the professor case. She's a mom. She's only like 39. I don't think she's gilf age. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information about it out of me. Something happened on the night of the killer's execution 10 years ago. Gilf is a mindset. <laughs> Surely nobody would want to get to the bottom of that more than Lord Van Zeeks. Milf. Middle-aged ilf. <laughs> the prosecution calls for the instructions in that missive to be scrapped. Oh, shit! Oh, okay. I mean, I guess he would want to find out the truth more than anyone. This is about his brother, who was killed. But, but, Lord Van Zeeks, the missive was issued by Lord Chief Justice's office! Objection! I don't care! The assigned prosecutor has the final say on policy in any particular trial. In other words, me. N yes Let Enoch Drebber and Dr. Scythe both take the sand together. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Order, order, order! Very well, I will uphold your request. That's the game, baby! It's all objections. It's all objections and hold it and take that's and excuse me's and gotchas and eurekas and all sorts of words. <laughs> Bailiff sent a subpoena with immediate effect addressed to Dr. Scythe of the Forensics Investigation Team. The woman is compelled to attend on Her Majesty's orders. Alright then. Enoch Drebber and Dr. Scythe. <laughs> fuck! 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 Shit! Fuck! Piss! Fuck! You object to the objections? You can do that. That also happens in the game. Someone does straight up just say, I object to your objection. <laughs> If they weren't colluding with one another, this crime could never have been committed. I'm just a stone's throw away. I can feel it. The truth behind all of this is about to come out. And... to be continued? Nope. Oh my god, they're all here! The Goths! They're all here. Thank you for your attendance at such short notice, Dr. Scythe. I'm disappointed in you, Lord Van Zeeks. 
I object to the objection of the objections objection that the prosecution objects to. Object the objection. This is gonna be a long one? Oh boy, okay. You've completely betrayed the agreed policy of both Scotland Yard and the prosecutor's office. Betrayal is not in my nature, as long as the truth isn't compromised. If it is, if there's even a hint of wrongdoing, then no matter whom it concerns and or disgruntles. You want to st it stop here? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then once the cross-examination starts, I'll stop there. I will pursue the matter to the bitter end, as would any prosecutor with assault. Yeah, it's really good, but it also really, really long. Okay, yeah, okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> thank you for letting me know ahead of time, because I do have work tomorrow, so I can't really stay up too long. <laughs> so yeah, once the cross-examination starts, then I will stop there. What can- what can we say? The- the writer likes to write. Yeah, this is the third case, too. Holy shit. And if they get longer with each case, my god, it's gonna be a while. But we're so close, I can taste it. You took the victim's life by means of a machine that you constructed in your workshop. And Dr. Scythe? As the investigating coroner, you were the first one to, to the scene to examine the victim's body. Long stream, tired car, less focus and work. Yeah, pretty much. I also stayed up late last night, and I woke up running on like four hours of sleep, and uh, I did my work, but I was I also like spent my breaks taking naps and being asleep. So I didn't really have any lunch today until like after I finished work. <laughs> <laughs> that you collaborated with each other and were both complicit in this crime. Mm. And where's your evidence? At present, we have no definitive evidence, but we do have a very significant clue. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, of course, about the waxwork. This model of the killer known as the Professor, who was sentenced to death ten years ago. You don't need to tell me. I witnessed the man's execution with my own eyes, and officially pronounced him dead. One time you stayed up awake watching TV until 3am, you fully regret that decision. Yeah, if like, uh, I tend to stay up late a lot, but I really need to stop doing that, at least during the weekdays, because it also like affects me, like, my work. Like, I've, I I get my work done, but I also feel so tired. Then I tend to spend, like, my breaks taking naps. When I could be, like, taking a walk or eating food. That remains to be seen. Is that so? According to, according to newspaper reports from the time, on the night following his execution, the killer came back to life. Don't waste my time. And the sole witness to that mysterious event was you, Mr. Drebber, wasn't it? I get to do his robot voice. If what you saw in the graveyard that night ten years ago wasn't some chilling fiction, but in reality, it would make you privy to a very great secret of Dr. Scythe's. A secret so profound it would compel the coroner to agree to collaborate in your evil scheme, in fact. But why would they want Asmund dead, though? What did he do to them? Mr. Drebber, tell the court! Tell everyone the truth of what you saw that night in Lowgate Cemetery! So he was the student who saw it. You can see the resemblance, actually, can't you? With the man in Madame to Spells, I mean. Surely he's not going to claim that's really what he saw, especially not after all these years. He was a research student in the University of London, was he? And a bit too clever for his own good, if you ask me. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk.
What an interesting twist. Hmm? When at the time, not one person would take me seriously. Yet now, here we are, ten years later, and suddenly, my story matters, and in a court of law. Very well then, if everyone so wishes. Let's be frank, I'll tell you the truth of what happened that night, for what it's worth. What was that about? So, Mr. Drubber, your testimony please, about the events of that night ten years ago. You will tell the court exactly what you stumbled across in No Gate Cemetery. Yes, of course, as you wish. All right, let's see that. Let's see that testimony, and then when we get to the cross examination, we'll stop there. <laughs> the reason I was in Low Gate Cemetery in all ten years ago was for. A spot of moonlighting, shall we say. Yes, the illustration in that newspaper article was based on what I witnessed that night. But thinking back now, I realized that I never actually saw the professor. What? Soon afterwards, I was visited by a young woman who sculpted a model of me from wax. Then I gave up on my dream of becoming a scientist, and it was all because of that newspaper article. Eh? Wait a minute! You're... you're claiming you didn't actually see the professor now? Of course. You'd have to have a screw loose if you believed a corpse could come back from the dead. What?! You're saying this article is... Not worth the paper it's printed on? I think that would describe it perfectly. Yes. Bullshit! Ah! If the details in that article aren't true, it nullifies your argument for why Mr. Jebra and Dr. Scythe would have been working together. So he's discrediting himself to cripple my argument? Tell me, witness. You claim to have been in the cemetery on some auxiliary business. Can you elaborate? Hmm. That's right. Grave robbing. To be precise. What? As you know, Lowgate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison. So, among students at the university, it had a reputation for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. C grave robbing you say? Yes. Exhuming fresh corpses to sell is reasonably lucrative. Of course, I never laid a finger on any valuables buried with the dead. I think grave robbing corpses to like sell their organs is worse. So you were one of the so-called resurrectionists. A particular unpleasant scourge on society. Actually, my fellows and I went by another name. The Repurposers. <laughs> that... that is quite beyond the pale! You would invite divine retribution, sir! Yes, well... What is grave robbing exactly? It's basically like... It's like the name implies. Robbing from the dead. Like, you dig up a, like, a grave or cemetery and steal from it. Like, say, for example, if a deceased person was, like, buried with, like, wearing a really fancy necklace or, like, a watch or something valuable, you dig up their grave and steal it and do whatever you want with it. That's essentially grave robbing. It's not limited to valuables, though. It can also sometimes be limited to the people themselves. It's, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, but it happens. It definitely happens. Blech. Yes, well, I think I suffered retribution enough. 
The Daily Circus eventually unearthed my name and put it in print. It caused me a great many headaches. In the end, I had to leave the university. The turn of the century medical research kind of needed fresh bodies. Yeah, with like, if it's for like research, then it's fine. But grave robbing is a lot of just like, just stealing and not for like research. That's just as dumb as robbing a bank and repeatedly telling everyone that you're robbing the bank. <laughs> At the time, there wasn't really much way to tell when someone grave robbed. The technology just wasn't there. Now it's it's kind of easy with like cam like security cameras and like fingerprints and all that and all that nonsense and forensic science. But back then, like you wouldn't be able to tell who did it. Is you just left there with like a dug up grave robbed of its valuables or even its people. That was the only paper to have the bad grace to identify me unan unambiguously, I might add. I see. Oh! So the reason... So the reason his name is only in the Daily Circus is because it's like... It's like, it's sort of like a... Like a gossip magazine, in a way? Like gossip paper? Where it's like... Rumors and shit, or whatever. It's like we're we're paparazzi usually pr print their stuff, because like normal newspapers would just leave him anonymous. Because yeah, if someone found out that you were like claiming this, people would think you're crazy. But this newspaper just straight up said his name, and that fucked with his life. If this was a attorney taking place in the modern day, and everyone was grave robbing, their name would be Robbie Grave. A tabloid. Yes, that's what it was. I, I forgot the name. A tabloid. Thank you, Bull. Yeah, so it's a, it's essentially a tabloid. That's why they just name dropped him like that. We drew the illustration for this article. Ah, uh, yes, that was the reporter who exposed me. He sketched that right in front of me as I described the scene. Wait. <gasps> Obviously, as time ticked on, I bitterly regretted what I'd done. <gasps> By George, I think we got a motive! It seems every time we get close to winning the case, we get our ass handed to us. Yeah, that's- that's- that's basically Ace Attorney. A every single case is like that. Like, you get close to the answer, you feel like you finally got it, and then a witness or the prosecution just pulls something from right on there and you're like, well, fuck, I gotta solve this now. But more often than not, every time they do that, it just leads us to, like, finding even more pieces of the puzzle and solving an even bigger mystery than we were led to believe. And I think we just unearth a motive. So he said that the person who drew the sketch of the newspaper is the reporter he told this to. So, whoever did this case, and, uh, or did this sketch in this article, basically ruined his life. And... you know... you know... what's the name here? So... If we're led to believe that Odie Asman was the reporter, that he drew this, that he wrote this article, I believe we now have a motive for Drever to want him dead. Because he literally ruined his life with this. He was- he had to leave university, everyone thought he was crazy. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, he had a motive, that's it. That's his motive. Revenge. It's like... This man ruins his fu this man ruins your fucking life and then you see that he just became like this- This fucking... Rich, like... Investor. And it's like... You'd be pissed off too! You'd want revenge! How come your life gets ruined by this scumbag, but he gets to live a lap of luxury with all this money? Like, yeah, that's the motive. We got it. We just gotta prove it now. Counterpoint, he got a cool-ass robot arm because of this. Why would he be mad? <laughs> Not everyone thinks the robot arm is cool, I'm afraid. You would nuke him. <laughs> Claiming to have seen something I never truly saw. Foolish. Very foolish. Hmm. Well, counsel for the defense. 
You may proceed with the cross-examination now. At once, my lord. And... That's where we'll stop here. We are not doing the cross-examination. We will do that next week. So, let's save. Oof! Oof! Let me stretch my back. Ugh! Oh, yeah, we were leaving it there. Ah, uh, but thank you everyone for stopping by and watching me mess around and call me out and defend me at the same time. Let me see who is online right now. So we can do maybe a little a little raid. Uh, who is online? Uh, is anyone online? Mm, no, it doesn't seem like... Some folks are online. Eh, maybe next time then. Yeah! This game is good. Yeah! Uh, I stream this game every Monday. It's like, my usual schedule is Mondays I stream this game, Wednesdays I do art, and then Friday, uh... I, Fridays I've been streaming Bug Fables, but I've been thinking of maybe playing, like, different RPGs on Friday, making, like, RPG Friday. Because lately, I've really been wanting to replay Super Mario RPG, but I also really want to start Chrono Trigger at some point. And I also really need to finish Pokemon Black 2, because I haven't played that in a while. So, I might shuffle between RPGs I have in my library for Fridays. And we'll, we'll see what we do. Yeah! Yeah, so if you want to see me keep, like, want to see me play this game again, tune in on Monday. That's when I stream this. Stretching. Ugh. But thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. Thank you for the donation, Anti, if you're still here. No! <laughs> I dropped my controller! <laughs> you made me drop my controller! <laughs> oh. Yeah. I will see you all next time. Oh. Let's go to the title screen. <laughs> You're playing guilty. <laughs> Bye, everybody! Look at this cool title screen. Yeah! Yeah, no problem. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. Goodbye! Goodbye! Bye-bye.